Hello, this is EV Journey here and we are in Bordeaux. Just bought some pastries from this shop to take back to Portugal. Yeah, I'm going all the way to Lisbon today. That's over 1,200 kilometers. I'm going in this beautiful Model 3 rear wheel drive LFP battery. Now this is the 60 kilowatt hour battery version of the car. And this is from 2023. So we're going to see how quickly we can do 1,000, over 1,200 kilometers today, charging as frequently as possible and keeping to the speed limit. Now, we're just about to get onto the motorway over there. Okay then, the car's at 86%. It's not, that may add five minutes to our trip, but not much more. Uh, we're gonna go all the way from Bordeaux here to Lisbon here in Portugal. And uh, we've got one, two, three, four, Tesla charging stops en route, that's what it's saying. First Tesla start charging stop is in um, Bayonne. And that is a V2 charger and we should get, and we should get there with 24% charge. This is currently one degree Celsius outside and this car has a heat pump. And you be, may be thinking about buying a Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive like this one. It's cheaper than the long range. The long range is about 8,000 euros more expensive or 9,000 euros more expensive. You may be thinking about that. So this is going to help you decide whether to get the rear wheel drive or the long range. Now we will leave exactly 8.30. Now if you are thinking about buying a Tesla Model 3, then please use my referral link below. It's exactly 8.30 and we're off. So it's gonna take a little bit to get to the motorway. We're going to see how long we can do this. And the first place is a traffic light. Now that traffic light has gone green and we get up to another traffic light. Meters. You may have a petrol car and think about electric car, but you may be worried about the range of a Model 3 rear wheel drive or electric cars in general in the charging infrastructure. So I'm going to do this long trip to prove to you how easy it is. I don't know how easy it's going to be. I think it's going to be easy, but we may have problems on the way. Now, I'm not going to stop for one hour to have lunch. I'm just going to stop for the amount of time necessary it is for me to charge. I've got a sandwich by the side of me if I do get hungry, um, perhaps for the next charge to stop. The idea is we're going to do this as quickly as possible. And the only thing that's going to slow us down is chargers. But we're going to keep to all the speed limits. So if the speed limit on the French motorway is 130 kilometers an hour, I'll do 130. On the Portuguese motorway is 120, I'll do 120. Where there's sections of 70 kilometers an hour, like now, I'll do 70 kilometers an hour. At the end, we can see um, how much it cost us, um, how long it's taken us, and how easy or how difficult it was. So thank you for watching this channel. The sun's just coming up. And if you do like this content, please remember to click subscribe. This is the middle of the winter, 2nd of December, 2023. Currently two degrees outside. So this trip is going to be quicker and easier in the summer because electric vehicles always use a bit more energy in the winter because obviously they have to heat the interior. When I've got it set to 22 degrees, I'm going to be very comfortable. I love to be comfortable, so uh, comfort for the win. I'm not going to be doing this, turning the heater off just to get a bit more efficiency or range. No, that's not the plan. We're going to drive this like we drive a petrol car. Summer, we could probably do this quicker. Um, but I don't think there's going to be a big difference, to be honest, because this car is so good. This Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive is just so good at doing long distances. It's unbelievable. But this is amazing in France. We can do 130 kilometers an hour, so let's go. 130 kilometers an hour. This is something we can't do in Portugal. Does autopilot work 130 kilometers an hour? Yes, I think so. So I think it's around 215 kilometers to the border of Spain, and then we'll be in Spain. <laughs> I'm surprised how many lorries there are today, just rows of lorries in the first lane. Um, but I think something slow is overtaking the lorries, now we're doing 104 kilometers an hour. So it's going to slow us down as well. That's the same in a petrol car. Uh, so this is realistic drive. Now it's Saturday. I didn't think you was allowed lorries on Saturday in France, but I must be wrong, obviously. <laughs> Perhaps it depends on the road. But this is the main artery to Spain. This must be a very big economic route. It's probably bringing all the Christmas goodies to Portugal for the shops this, this Christmas, I guess. Beautiful sunrise, but it's still one degree Celsius. And today there's no rain, because yesterday in this area here, there was so much rain. So hopefully we can go all the way to Portugal without, without rain. But I doubt it, because we... So, do you want to see how good autopilot is? 
Um, so currently on the French, so we're doing 130 kilometers an hour as you can see there. And this is autopilot. This is box standard autopilot that comes with the Model 3. So it's steering for us, keeping us in the lane. I have to apply a little thing and it's doing everything. Now, if I change lane, it disengages. Then I have to engage it again by double clicking there. Now that's the standard feature. If you pay an extra, I think 3,500 euros, then you can, uh, it will actually change lanes for you. But I don't have that feature because I think it's quite expensive. But this is the bog standard, the cheapest Tesla you can get. And especially on clear motorways, like this one is not too bad. It's really easy. You see it's steering, it's doing acceleration, everything. And it just works really well. I don't know how it can work so well. Because it's not using radar, it's only using the uh, vision from all the cameras. You see there's a lorry ahead of us there. And then there's other lorries coming up. So if we ever take this one, put it back into autopilot can see this lorry here overtake this one here we go back in here this is detecting this lorry and this is something else that's going to slow us down it's the toll roads because I'm going to stop and pay first toll road of the day so temperatures increased to a massive three degrees Celsius woohoo four euros 20 it's a ruddy ripoff I don't know how long that took, but it slowed us down. It's currently 9.30, that means we've been in the car for an hour, and we've done 119 kilometres. Well, I love legally being able to drive at 130 kilometres an hour. Nothing better than the French motorway system, so that's a really good average, isn't it? Considering a small part at the beginning was traffic lights and getting out of Bordeaux and some traffic, but here we've been able to do 130 kilometres an hour very well so the consumption has been quite high for this car it's been 201 watt hours per kilometer why has it been high well it's currently four degrees celsius that doesn't help but all the way it's been heating the battery now why has it been heating the battery it's been heating the battery because we're going to the tesla supercharger in bayonne how long do you think it's going to take us to get to um, lisbon in portugal do you think we can do it in 12 hours 13 hours 14 hours let's have your guess now and then Leave your comment and we'll see at the end if you were right or wrong. I think it will be just under 13 hours, but let's see. Another toll here, uh, another four euros 20 to pay. So that's been eight euros 40 so far today. This is gonna slow me down again. But anyway, the side in there, there was just a petrol car on fire. I think everybody had got out and the uh, front of the car was on fire. So I think everybody's okay. It wasn't an accident or anything. So yeah, petrol cars catch on fire, not just electric cars. Eh? Um, this car, funnily enough, it's got LFP batteries, which are uh, iron phosphate batteries, and these basically are impossible to catch on fire, even if you stab them with um, nails or anything. Unlike the NCM batteries, which can catch on fire, but it's not very common. It's more common that petrol cars catch on fire than um, electric cars. But so we've got another road toll here. I don't know how much this one is. And we're 11 minutes away from the supercharger. Currently the battery's more than enough. <laughs> no cash. Oh, just card then. So that's four euros 10. So there's a theme here. There was four euros something, it seems. Yeah. Oh, what glorious weather we're having today. So this is the first stop. Um, it's two minutes to 10 o'clock. So in the car, what that, what's that? Nearly one and a half hours. I hopefully get a cup of tea. This is a Tesla supercharger. I'm gonna turn off the main motorway now. It's not very far from this, the main motorway. These are V2 chargers. Um, so it means that as long as you get one with nobody next to you, you should get up to 150 kilowatts of power. But now if somebody is next to you, the right. then you'll only get 75 kilowatts of power. So it's important not to park near anybody. Obviously, if they're busy and they're full, then uh, everyone's getting 75 kilowatts, but they're A and B. So you want to, that, that's a pair. So if someone's at B, you don't want to get on A, you want to get on a pair that's empty. Now they've got version three and even version four chargers, which are much quicker and they don't have this problem. Uh, but these are the older chargers and the other chargers now are much quicker. This one limits itself to uh, how much? 150 kilowatt, even though this car can charge up to 170 kilowatts. If you get a long range one, they're 250 kilowatts. But even a long range one, it's going to be limited to 150 kilowatts on these the and... V2 chargers. I think most of the chargers today are going to be V2, I'm not sure. 
We will check, won't we? It'd be good to get a V3 charger past the McDonald's. In 200 oh, meters. Could go to McDonald's left. for breakfast. But I'm going to go to the hotel and have a cup of tea, I think. And they've got toilets and stuff, and it's clean. It's in here. So we have to turn in here. So what's the price of this one's here at the moment? So Tesla supercharger is normally pretty cheap compared to other chargers. Well, there's a Lidl near here where it's cheaper at the Lidl, but we're going here just because it's now easier. Have Currently, this is 33 cents per kilowatt hour. And at the Lidl, it's 25 cents per kilowatt hour, but you have to pay one euro to start. Um, but it's just easier for me to come here because it's right by the motorway than to go to Lidl. Park the car in the sun to warm it up a bit. Yeah, in the sun for the wind. It's not even warm in the car, it's 20 degrees, but yeah, let's just do that. So, let's get this charging as quickly as possible. CCS, plug that in there, and it should start charging. But it's saying um, that we needed 30 minutes to continue our destination. Um, I'm going to get a cup of tea. At the start it did say 20 minutes, but I think because the consumption has been quite high, uh, if you look there, 195 watt hours per kilometre. Um, that's been quite high, but I'm going to get a cup of tea. No, it's actually saying 15 minutes to the charging destination, only 15 minutes. 15 minutes enough time to get a cup of tea, I hope so. Um, so I'm going to have to be quick. Let's just have a quick check of charging speed. 85, 96, 103, 113, 124, that's good. Come get 150, 133, 146, yeah, that's basically 150. 149, yeah, that's the limit. So that's great, I'm going to get a cup of tea. Had a very good cup of tea in there um, and it costs three euros 20 not very expensive good clean toilets and very nice place to sit i leave a picture here anyway um i was told a minute ago that we've got enough to continue trip it said 14 percent to next supercharger i think that's a 250 kilowatt supercharger so that's great it's where is it it's in spain um we have to cross the pyrenees go south of bilbao and go to this place here what's that called anyway the internet's a bit slow in France compared to Portugal. It's near Mirandol de Ebro. I guess the Ebro is a river. I'm going to wait until this says 20%. We're at 75% per 75 charge. I just want a little bit more because going through the um, Pyrenees sometimes you can use a little bit more energy than what it's predicting, but normally the prediction is very good. It's 182 kilometers away, not very far away. Two hours, perfect timing. It's currently uh, 19 minutes past 10. Uh, I'm a little bit cautious, perhaps I'm too cautious, but I think it's better to be a little bit relaxed when you arrive at a supercharger. So you definitely think you've got enough because this morning when we started in, in uh, Bordeaux, did say we were going to arrive here, I think with 29%. In reality, we only arrived with 24%. It's not that much difference, but if you're going to arrive with 14%, then I don't know, there's some issues. You're going to arrive with then say 10% then 5%. It starts to become a bit stressful. But 20% I think gives you a little bit of margin if there's problems, traffic jams or whatever. Anyway, it's 8 degrees now. It's at 20%. So we plug, we just press that there. And I hate it stops. We get out as quickly as possible. It's a kind of race. Put the car into reverse and turn around here. Uh, turn left onto Avenue de Grand Bass. Turning circles better than the ID3, to be honest. <laughs> I used to own a Volkswagen ID3, and it's a great car as well. But this one's just the efficiency king. So, uh, we're leaving now, it's 10.21, and we'll be straight back on the motorway, then we'll be across Spain shortly, and across to the Pyrenees. Just to let you know, it's saying it's 181 kilometers away. Now it's saying we're gonna arrive with 22%. We should arrive at quarter past 12 more or less, so in around uh, just a bit less than two hours away. And I don't have any heating on or air conditioning or anything because I parked in the sun. It's actually quite warm in this car and I've got a thick jumper on actually. Little, yeah, it's just, it's just perfect. So, um, so that should save us a little bit of energy as well, but I'm not doing it to save energy. I'm just doing it to be comfortable. Uh, if I start to feel cold, I'll put it back on again. Or if I start to feel too hot, <laughs> if it's eight degrees outside, I'll leave it open the window, which I won't open the window because it'd be far too noisy. I'll um, put it to be a bit cooler, but yeah. So it's a good idea parking in the sun in the winter, you see. Um, solar en free solar energy, no, free solar heat for the wind. That's wonder of having a panoramic roof, you see. Soon we're going to cross the border and then uh, we'll be in Spain. So we're quite close to the border of Spain now and another toll road. Is this another four euros? So this one is just two euros 70. 
We're coming up to the last toll in France just before we cross the border into Spain. Uh, let's see how much this one is. So I guess it's by France or au revoir. Mon so yeah, let's see how much this one costs here then, shall we? I don't know how much that actually cost. I forgot to look. Um, but yeah, I forgot to look. So I guess we go to another toll road now, do we, in Spain? So, hola amigos. Hola amigos. We're now in Spain. Ho ho. Yes, Spain, officially Spain. We've just crossed the river. Now we can only do 120 kilometers an hour. That's bad. I don't understand is at these <laughs> at this border crossing here there's lots of police there's lots of customs people they normally don't stop you just let you through but the border between Spain and Portugal there's nothing <laughs> so this meant to be the EU but I guess because this is such a big uh, commercial route with lorries and stuff um, perhaps I need to do some checks in the big country France and Spain but anyway I find that a bit odd but anyway it's good I suppose they're looking after our safety uh, now we're going into mountainous region of the Pyrenees hopefully the weather will stay good um, I'm not sure but it's really glorious weather at the moment and um, we're going to try to keep to 120 kilometers an hour in this section it's a really beautiful section but obviously there's a lot of tunnels and there's a lot of things and now we have to pay two euros 91 to prepare your money it says how can you prepare your money and drive at the same time not quite sure how that works another toll in Spain but hopefully the tolls after the Pyrenees in Spain will stop so that toll there was 261 and we can go back up to 120 kilometers an hour now the idea today is to mainly use Tesla chargers because they're cheap and easy to use but there are other non Tesla chargers on route if we did have to use them I did two previous videos about charging at non Tesla EVs in France and Spain. I'll leave the links of both of those videos below if you're interested how to charge at non-Tesla chargers in Spain and France. Though so sometimes it is better to use non-Tesla uh, chargers. They're just more convenient. Sometimes they're at shopping centers, or they're, they're at restaurants or whatever. Um, so if you are a Tesla driver, it's a good idea to uh, keep an eye out for non-Tesla chargers. And some of them are very good and even quicker than Tesla chargers. So some of them can do up to 350 kilowatts even uh, this is a very important route particularly in the summer because there's many portuguese people living in france there's many north africans living in france many many spanish people living in france and they come on um, this route for their family holidays in the summer and also there's many french people who want to come to spain and portugal on holidays there's germans and whatever <laughs> there's many people using this route in the summer it can get very busy so Part of this video is showing you how to do it in the winter, and part of this video, oh, we just go through a tunnel. I'll explain after a tunnel because the tunnels are dark. Just go through lots of tunnels today. This video is going to show you how easy it is in an electric car to drive from Bordeaux to Lisbon. Now, obviously, you might start somewhere else like Paris or somewhere like that, but that route's really easy anyway because it just charges everywhere in France. And I suppose there's charges everywhere in Germany as well, or the Netherlands, or wherever you come from. Going from Bordeaux and then across the whole of Spain to get to Portugal. Very common holiday route. Um, so I think you should definitely get an electric car and not be worried about doing this trip in an electric car. I don't think it's any slower in an electric car than a petrol car. But we will see and you can make your own minds up. Uh, because in a petrol car, you also have to stop. I mean, after two hours of driving, we, I stopped for a cup of tea. What was it? 20 minutes? That's a normal stop. You have to stop for toilets and a cup of teas. So anyway, i am showing you how easy this is in an electric car and range is not a problem to do this trip. Even in the cheapest Tesla money can buy. Now in Portugal, this car is currently 39,000 euros and you'll get the nice new Highland. This isn't the Highland. And the Highland's even better. So we've got another road toll coming up in this area this is going to be the slowest area because uh, there's low road tolls and because it's going through the Pyrenees so there's lots of driving at 80 100 can't always do 120 here oh anyway, wait it's a ticket um, just to let you know we've done 72 kilometers since the last stop it's currently five minutes past 11 and um, in total and the consumption has been really good 154 kilowatt hours per kilometer since the last stop that's a low that's what it should be 
Going through the Pyrenees is really beautiful, as you can see. Look at that. Unfortunately, because we're in the 2nd of December and it's winter, uh, we won't be able to see much after 5 o'clock through Spain and Portugal. Uh, it would be dark. But luckily today we could start this um, episode within the sunlight. And this weather does look good. If it stays like that, it'd be fabulous. So I'm actually feeling too hot in this jumper. Um, I've got the roll, uh, sleeves rolled up. It's, a, it's a 10 degrees outside, so it's not that cold outside. Um, so I've got the air conditioning set to 18 degrees because I'm feeling too hot. I think at the next toll stop or somewhere, I'm going to take this jumper off. <laughs> but I don't want to stop just to take it off because um, that's going to slow us down. So I'll um, just have the air conditioning on. And it says we're going to arrive at the next charger and 21% battery. And that's going to be in exactly one hour's time. So the closer we get to this Tesla charger, the cloudier it gets. Hopefully it won't be raining there. So we're 33 minutes away now. Every Tesla charger from Bordeaux to Bayonne to this next place on the Ebro River, I guess, um, they're all about two hours from each other. And that's about perfect, isn't it, really? Really, you want to drive for two hours and have a little bit of a rest, drive for another two hours, a little bit of a rest. So it's, it's kind of what you want to do anyway, isn't it? we'll see what facilities they've got at this next supercharger. Another toll road. Have to put the ticket in the machine in this one, I guess. And it's starting to spit a little bit as well. Not good. So I think it's gonna be 15 euros 45, it says there. Let's see, shall we? That's it, we can go. So the motorway seems to come to an end here. And we're very close to Tesla chargers. I've never been to these Tesla chargers. Apparently there's 11 available, but I've just lost directions to it. In 200 meters, enter the roundabout and take the fifth exit. Yes, um, we're currently at 20%, so perhaps we get 170 kilowatts. Uh, that would be good, wouldn't it? So it seems very close to where, to the route we're on. In 200 so it's not off the meters, motorway. enter the roundabout. And there's another roundabout. It seems to be on some kind of industrial site, doesn't it? Uh, Let's try over there. Yeah, it's not the best location, is it? Anyway. <laughs> oh, there's a, there's a, I can say car wash. No, I'm wrong. It's not here because here is, um, it must be in this hotel, not at the petrol station. I always make that mistake. I always think it's going to be in the petrol station, but they're normally in hotels, you see. So it seems to be some cafeteria restaurant place. Um, I guess that's where they are. Nine available now, now. people are using them. Ah, oh, I can see them. I can see them. It's some cafeteria place. Someone's just pulled in, that's why. They're only 150 now kilowatt chargers. Now destination is on the left. Ah, that's this point. I thought they were going to be 300 kilowatt chargers. But we're pulling to this one here. Hopefully we get 150 kilowatts then. Or probably 149. That's what I normally get. I never get 150. But on the V2 ones, I get 172 sometimes. Hmm. Anyway, I'm going to get something from the cafeteria because now it's 12 minutes past 12 o'clock and we'll see how long we'll have to stay here. Let's plug it in, let's see what we got. It says 30 minutes to continue. Seems like I was a little bit of a rest then. 48 kilowatts, 68 kilowatts, 80 kilowatts, 93 kilowatts, 104 kilowatts, 115 kilowatts, 127 kilowatts. <laughs> here we go. 143 kilowatts, um, so that's perfect. So next we're going to go to Tordesillas, I've never been there either. And it, it says we have to charge 55 minutes there. Can't be right. Anyway, there's 12 at Tordesillas. Um, yeah, that's Tordesillas. And then the next one will be Portugal. So it'll be Tordesillas, then Portugal. Um, yeah, so apparently Tordesillas is 230 kilometers away, so we probably have to charge to quite a high percentage here. Probably to 80 or 90% my guess would be. And then the next one is going to be in Guarda in Portugal. Salamanca has got a supercharger, but um, something went wrong with it. So currently it's not working. So we've finished charging. It's saying 17% to next destination. I'm going to go to 20%. Let's just see how much it costs here. It's costing us at this time 42 cents per kilowatt hour. It's a little bit more expensive than France. It says the 12 of stores, 250 kilowatts, but they're not because they're because they're version two. Just think that's wrong. Let's just go, it's 18%. So 
so it's currently 12.46, I think we arrived at 12.11, so a little bit longer than 30 minutes, uh, but um, we've got 92% charge. So I had an orange juice in there and a packet of crisps, and it was freshly squeezed orange juice, uh, that's common in Spain, um, a large glass, and that was four now euros 80. To stay on so it wasn't bad actually, four euros 80 for that. Four euros 80 was good. The toilets were okay, not great, okay. It's a big cafeteria, I think they do food and stuff as well. It was, it was okay. Now enter the roundabout <laughs> and take the... Um, but they've got many, many tables, so I guess they get busy at lunchtime. Perhaps not at the weekend, but probably in the week, my guess would be, because they probably get lots of workers, because there's lots of factories and stuff around here. So they probably get lots of um, workers going there for lunch or whatever. Now enter... Anyway, I've solved jumper gate. I had a very thick jumper on, because I thought it'd be cold today. It is cold, it is eight degrees here. I actually did was I actually put a thinner jumper on because in the shirt I'm just going to be too cold in the car so I put a thinner jumper on now and we're going and we've got uh, the air conditioning and everything turned off apparently 230 kilometers away we should get air there in two hours and six minutes or going well and and yeah it will arrive with 19% currently at 92% and our efficiency during the whole t trip so far has been 186 watt hours per kilometer and we've done 360 kilometers now the roundabout. tell me you have his name at least Altman opened his mouth just to let you know with jumper gate so um, it's getting a bit chilly in the car now with a thinner jumper and the fact it's cloudy and there's no sun um, so I set the heating back to 21 degrees Celsius uh, the idea of this trip is to be comfortable not to freeze to death or, or boil to death and not be comfortable so yeah so the jumper gate saga continues and the scenery is beautiful it's exactly 1.30 and that's five hours since we started off in Bordeaux so we've done 436 kilometers doesn't seem that good but the um, part through the Pyrenees really was a lot of 100 kilometers an hour 80 kilometers an hour etc so I think it is good um, this part here now, it's easy to do 120 kilometers an hour. It's just clear. There's a few lorries to overtake, but basically it's good. The problem is the temperature has gone down to six Celsius. Um, <laughs> um, and there is a slight headwind from the Northwest. So since the last charge, which was 78 kilometers away, we're actually doing 200 watt hours per kilometer. And I think this is the most I've ever seen in a Model 3, to be honest. Um, but since the start, it's been 188. In the summer, the consumption figures are definitely going to be lower and you'll definitely be able to do this trip a little bit quicker, I think, in the summer. Um, but this is the middle of the winter, six degrees Celsius. And um, yeah, I'm feeling okay in my, um, thin jumper i think i should have had the thin jumper to start the trip where it was sunny and then the thicker jumper for this part of the trip anyway the temperature in the car is set to 22 and i feel very comfortable um yeah so about an hour and 20 minutes away from the supercharger in Tordesillos. i think that's how you pronounce it right so i think everything's going well and we can keep 220 kilometers an hour which is great so we're just passing burgos and in Burgos, there's a Tesla supercharger. I know that because I used it yesterday. And it's in a very posh castle hotel with a very posh restaurant and very posh cafeteria. You can see it from here. I can put that through there. You can see it from here. That's the Tesla supercharger over there. Can you see that? You can see like a castle. That's it. Fortunately, we don't have to stop there today because um, it's a little bit of a walk from the charger to the cafeteria and it's all way to service and all that and it would take too long so, <laughs> so uh yeah so i'm happy but the toilets there are very good it's a very good supercharger it's a 150 kilowatt charger as well i think version v2 we have got enough charge hopefully to get all the way to tordesillos if we don't we'll be stuck on the way or we'll have to use a non-tesla charger um but yeah, you don't have to stop at all the superchargers on the route. The car chooses the best superchargers for you. Now I could top up a bit there, I guess. But the state of charge is quite high. We've got 62% at the moment. So the charge would be very slow. So it's better to go all the way to Tordesillas and charge there. And that's around 143 kilometers away now, or one hour and 16 minutes. Jumper gate continues. As you can see, the sun has come out and hopefully we won't have any more bad weather on this route. 
so luckily I put the thinner jump on earlier because now I'm feeling quite warm again and I've just turned and I've turned the heating off so currently there's no heating there's no air conditioning and I feel good in the thinner jumper but I might have to put some cooling on soon if it gets any warmer but outside it's not warm outside it's nine degrees Celsius um, a little bit warmer than before but this is the winter but these are the best days in the winter when it's sunny we'll be coming up to the supercharger soon in about five minutes so since the last charge we've done 180 watt hours per kilometer which is good we've done 225 kilometers currently we've got 20 percent of the battery and it predicts we're getting there at 18 percent so at the start i think it predicted uh, didn't we leave the charger when it was saying we'd get there with 19 percent so it's pretty damn accurate this tesla it's unbelievable anyway yeah and we've used 41 kilowatt hours so far since the last charger uh since bordeaux we've done 586 kilometers and currently it's quarter to um three o'clock so basically that means we've been driving for six hours and 15 minutes to do 586 kilometers the price of this supercharger so currently there's 10 available the price at this time is 42 cents per kilowatt hour not bad currently it's in a hotel that's temporarily closed uh, so this is bad because i hope there's a restaurant or something i can eat or get something to eat otherwise i don't know what i'm going to do starve to death probably so there's a 24 hour service place that's where we're being told to move off to so i don't know if that's where tesla is or something else but uh, that seems quite good uh, we're going to turn off now this is how close it is to the motorway it seems to be pretty close it seems to be the other side of the road yeah it's at this hotel al montico cafeteria please be open please um <laughs> i bet it's shut, yeah, shut. Right. how am i going to eat unbelievable in two let's just hope the tesla supercharger works now I there's a repsol here which probably does sandwiches and stuff it's not there. Ah, there's a nice restaurant there as well. Is there any chargers? In 200 meters, there's a charger. Left. Uh, it's waylets that won't work. It looks like a 50 kilowatt charger. Waylets never work for some reason. Anyway, we go to Tesla. Now I'll see what I'm going to do. Let's change some plans. We will see. I mean, it's in a good location just off the motorway. But if the restaurant's shut, damn it. Uh, there does seem to be cars there. Perhaps it is open. I mean non-Tesla cars. Now turn right on. Yeah, it says. Now so turn right. Is so it a joke, is it? Must be at the end. I don't see any chargers. Must be past this part here. They've got a hiding Tesla chargers. Yeah, I see them. And they're V3 or V4. I don't know what they are. Let's plug into the quick ones. Oh, they're V4, I think. Never used V4 before. Yes! V4 for the win, plug into that. Why not? There's the old V2 ones, but sod them. We're gonna get that, the quick one. Yes, ho ho. 2.51, we're at 19%. Exactly what it predicted, and let's just plug in, shall we? This is V4 chargers, I think. Never seen these ones. Oh, look at that. Plug that in. See how much we get from this one then got two three four chargers five and then we've got one two three four five six seven eight of the old chargers seems good we're getting 170 yeah this is the maximum this car can get we're getting 170 saying 30 minutes to continue trip i'm going to see 30 minutes is not too long is it remembered i had bread in the boot that i bought in bordeaux this morning and some nice crisps so i'm just basically filling myself with junk food on the way back crisps and um a bit of bread there's no there's no butter there's no cheese but i do have some bottles of cider and bottles of bordeaux wine but i don't think i can drink those otherwise i'll be sleeping here tonight in the hotel as you can see is shut we're at 84 percent it's saying eight minutes remaining um the speed's gone down to 50 kilowatts as expected so yeah overall we've done 591 kilometers average 183 watt hours per kilometer another 30 minute stop i think we'll be going in a minute so it's 325 we're leaving the car's at 94 percent 
thankfully I had bread and crisps in the car. So Elon Musk needs to buy this hotel and restaurant, I don't know, make it the headquarters of Twitter or something, and put a nice restaurant Not there. Um, yeah, so we're going back to the motorway. So next stop is in Portugal, saying we're going to get there with 17% charge. So I didn't go up to 20% charge, it would just take too long. Meters. Now, if I hadn't right. have eaten there, I was considering stopping at Ionity or something a bit further along, um, charging this to to enough to get us to an Ionity or another charger along here. There is other non-Tesla chargers along here. We've got all these other options, but I do but I don't want to use them at the moment um, if I can help it. So we're going to get to Portugal now with 12%. <laughs> That's bad. Perhaps I will have to stop at an Ionity. Um, where in a moment, we keep going. There's an Ionity past Salamanca. So perhaps that will be an option. But we'll see what happens. And there's other charges in Portugal on the way to the Guarda as well. So, uh, um, yeah, we'll be fine, I think. We get up to 120 kilometres an hour and we see what, what happens to our consumption and if we need to stop again or not. This is getting a little bit interesting now, isn't it? Um, it's saying 13%, that's more than enough anyway. Um, I guess we can get to the Tesla charger in Guarda with 1%, that's more than enough. Yes, I had a couple pull in, driving in with a Model Y, they spoke Portuguese, and they asked me, oh, what's the difference between the V2 chargers and V4 chargers? I said the V4 chargers were quicker, so they uh, put their car into the V4 charger. So that's a very good site for V4 chargers. It's the first time I've ever used a V4 charger, but yeah. If that restaurant was open, it'd be perfect. Um, but it's only a 30 minute stop anyway, which I don't think is enough time for a restaurant, but at least to get, um, I don't know, uh, some kind of snack or fast food type thing would have been nice. They have got lots of holes and the electrical place is ready to add more charges. So perhaps in the future, more charges will be going in there. It'd be fantastic. Uh, but they just need to put a restaurant or perhaps they could get someone selling hot dogs from a stand or something. Yeah, that'd be a good idea, wouldn't it? Yeah, somebody can set up a hot dog stand there. Keep right to Just going past Salamanca. We've done 94 kilometers since the last charging stop. And our average has been 165 watt hours per kilometer. So I did a video from Lisbon to Bordeaux and I slept in Salamanca on the way. That's a much more sensible way of doing this trip. So if you want to see that video, I'll leave a link below. Now, it says we're going to arrive, arrive at the Guarda Supercharger with 20%. So I definitely don't think we need to stop at Ionity. So we're just going to continue. You can already see Portugal on the signs. It's not so far away now. 150 kilometers away from the Guarda Supercharger. Um, and we've done 688 kilometers since Bordeaux. And it's currently 4.17. So 17 minutes past four o'clock. Now, this road here, there's not much traffic, so it's really easy to do 120 kilometers an hour. I don't even have to overtake lorries or anything on this part of the stretch. Well, a few, but not many. Um, before, there's a lot more to overtake. So the closer we get to Portugal, the less traffic there is. So that's great. And it's, yeah, and the, we've got good weather and sun. That's what we want. It's cold outside though, it's eight degrees. I don't have the heating on in the car. So that's probably why we're getting some good consumption figures. It's not because, uh, it's just because with this jump I just feel good. I don't need any heating or air conditioning or anything. The temperature's just good. Um, yeah, so everything's going really well. And hopefully in one hour and 20 minutes we've been in the Guarda Supercharger. It says there Portugal is 111 kilometers away. It's 13 minutes past five o'clock and we're still in Spain. But in exactly one kilometer we'd be in Portugal. Yes. So we've gone across the whole of Spain and we've only charged twice. And we charged at the beginning in Bayonne in France. That's three charges so far to do exactly 800 kilometers since Bordeaux. And our average since Bordeaux is 181 watt hours per kilometer. And we've used 144 kilowatt hours since Bordeaux. We have to slow down here to 80 for some reason. I don't quite know why. And we're crossing over this bridge and now we're in Portugal! Yes, we're here, woohoo, we're in Portugal! So, it is exactly 14 minutes past four o'clock in Portugal. We've just gained an hour. How good's that? It's amazing. So we can go back up to 120 kilometers an hour now. Now we're in Portugal, yes. 
So it will be getting dark soon because I don't know. It's sunset must be around. Oh, oh sunset's around five, isn't it? Five thirty. Anyway, charger is thirty-six kilometres away or twenty-three minutes. So we should be there soon. And here, I'll definitely be able to get a drink. Hopefully, it hasn't shut down since um, Friday night because I was there Friday night at this supercharger. It's only a V2 supercharger, but it should be good. It's a very nice hotel, and you can get a very good drink there. I might actually try to get a little bit of food if I can. Um, but I think we'll, we won't stay there that long to charge. We'll see. So we just went through the first uh, electronic toll in Portugal, and that was 95 cents. So we're gonna get lots of electronic po uh, tolls in Portugal. I will try to capture all of them for you. So here's another electronic toll and this one is 80 cents. There we go B. That was the box taking money from my bank account. So we're just about to turn off to the Guarda supercharger. If I can actually see the signs, yeah we have to turn off here. Because the sun is in my eyes currently. Let's see the price shall we um, at this time, because it depends on the time of the day. It's 31 cents per kilowatt hour. This is the cheapest Tesla charger we've gone to today, isn't it, I think? In Spain it was more expensive, and in France I think it was 33 cents per kilowatt hour. 31 cents, pretty good. It says it's three minutes from here, 2.6 kilometers. So it's a little bit off the motorway. We'll have to come back this way as well to get In back onto the motorway. Meters, take so we're going to lose three minutes there and three minutes back. Now there is an Ionity charge a bit further along, but I'm not sure we've got enough to get to the now Ionity charger. We did, we could use that one instead, and that, one, that one's right on the motorway so we wouldn't lose any time. Tal is just over there. Um, so just go around here. It's a very nice hotel. And it's cold in Portugal. In here it's cold. It should be warm near Lisbon. Um, it's um, nine degrees Celsius here, um, but inside normally they've got a log fire going. You can get a drink right. and something to eat. It's even got a spa, like jacuzzis and stuff. I think or pool. No, you know, it seems quite busy today, doesn't it? Um, there's a lot of cars here. Now That's it's a long weekend. Right your destination. Long weekend in Portugal. Perhaps people are stopping here. So I'm going to go and find a Tesla charger. These are the V2 chargers, 150 kilowatt. This one there seems good. But like this one here, this one here seems better. 3B. This one is which one? 3A, yes, I can use this one. 3A, 3B. Better not accelerate over the edge because it's a cliff. Oh, it is 4.36, exactly 4.36, 5.36 in France and Spain. We actually arrived with 16%, if you can see that there, 16%. Say in 40 minutes, which might be a good time for me to get something to eat and drink, but we'll see. I think we should be getting around 148 kilowatts, let's see what we get. 121, 132, saying 35 minutes now, you see. We've only got 30 minutes to be honest. 147. We're gonna get something to eat and drink, which is a bit more healthy than bread and crisps. Um, and we'll see. So then we're at 94% and it says we get home with 1% and it says we've got another 10 minutes to wait. We're not going to wait 10 minutes. I'm going to charge a bit at Ionity. So we got 94%. We're not waiting 10 minutes to get to 100%, whatever. Uh, we're gonna probably need to stop at Ionity anyway, because it's cold. Actually, I probably should have unplugged it about five or ten minutes ago but I had two alcohol free beers and a toasted sandwich that was absolutely amazing all for the price of nine euros eighty which when you see the toasted sandwich the quality of everything was not expensive in an amazing setting um, and the toilets there by far the best toilets I've used today and by far far the cleanest um, it's absolutely amazing stop this one in Guarda, even if it's a bit of a six minute diversion. So in the bar they could do hamburgers or toasted sandwiches. He said the toasted sandwich was a bit quicker than the hamburgers at the toasted sandwich. No, I didn't have enough time to have a hamburger. Well, perhaps we'd have stayed an extra 10 minutes now. Um, but you see, even if we charge to the extra 6% taking 10 minutes, um, we'd get home with like 6%. Too much of a risk. So we're just going to charge an Ionity. There's an Ionity on route. Could charge at Ionity or somewhere else. Perhaps I'll charge it on Ionity just to be sure. 
yes, it's currently 5.13 and we'll see what time we can get home. Um, so we're not actually going to Lisbon. We're going just a bit further south of Lisbon, past the River Teju, to my hometown of Moita. So it's a bit further than Lisbon, but not much further, perhaps an extra 20 kilometers further than Lisbon. That makes this trip even a bit longer than it, sh than it would be if we were to go into Lisbon. But most people, I guess, would go to Lisbon. Uh, so it's gonna start to get dark now. Just past uh, Charger, that's about one kilometer from when we've just got on the motorway from the Supercharger in Guada. And on this Charger at the at this service station, which is directly on the motorway, guess what was charging there? A Tesla. Sometimes even Tesla drivers see it's convenient to use the, the chargers on the service stations than to have a six minute diversion um, like we just did. So if we'd have used Ionity in Spain instead of stopping at the, um, the last one in Spain and, and Ionity here, we'd have probably saved at least six minutes. Uh, but it, then it would cost us much more money because Ionity in Portugal is extremely expensive. I don't think it's so bad in Spain. I think it's about 65 cents per kilowatt in Spain. Whereas that, that supercharger there was only 31 cents. So it's dirt cheap. So here's our next electronic toll, 75 cents. We're just going into a tunnel. The toll, 45 cents. So we're 25 kilometers from the supercharger and we're going downhill. So the consumption is amazing. It's 110 watt hours per kilometer at the moment. So now we're 34 kilometers from the charger and we've just paid another 90 cents on the electronic toll. Almost on every service station, which is probably around every 30 kilometers now, 30 or 40 kilometers all the way home, there's normally at least one charger. In Portugal, to use any charger that's a non-Tesla charger, you need, um, you need a card that's compatible with the Mobi E network. Now, what I suggest is that if you're coming to Portugal, um, install the app Mio and with that app Mio order a card but order a card two or three weeks before you come because I have known some people have had problems with their phone with 4G connection 3G connection so it's much better to have a physical card and if you do need to come to Portugal and you are going to use Mio then use my referral code that's below and I think, think you'll gain some bonus with it or something just another road toll there 85 cents and we're 55 kilometers from the last charge and our consumption is 131 watt hours per kilometer and we're doing well so we're just going for another road toll like electronic one 70 cents and we're 73 kilometers from the guarda service station so another road toll and this one's 65 cents so here on the right we've got Ionity chargers. The problem is we've got a high state of charge at 72% and the charging will be slower than um, optimal. So even though there's four of them, I'm going to risk it and I'm going to see if there's a service station near home. So there's lots of service, there's a few more service stations for the way home that have got chargers. But there's no one charging that Ionity on this side or the other side from what I can tell. So there's a charger in 82 kilometers and we'll try that one first. And when we get to that one, we should be around 50%. So perhaps on that one, we can add 20%. Be able to go home and I have a bit of buffer because I do like to ride home with around 10 or 20%. So now we're 96 kilometers from the last charge and we just passed another road toll, 65 cents. Yeah, I forgot to tell you that distance from the Guada supercharger to my home is 337 kilometers. Now in the summer, this would be really easy. Um, but in the winter, it's more difficult to do in one shot. It may be possible today, uh, but we'll probably not risk it. Uh, but we'll see. I'll see before I charge if I think we can make it um, to my home or not. But uh, we're now in about 70 kilometers time. Four kilometers since we charged, and this toll here is 50 cents. So we're 118 kilometers from the charger and another toll 85 cents for the win 128 kilometers since the charger and another road toll 75 cents again for the win another toll 152 kilometers from the last charge and that's 70 cents 166 kilometers since last charge and another 70 cents toll doing 145 
watts per hour, which is very good. But it's almost downhill from uh, Guada to here. Now it's saying that we'll get home with 4% and that's too risky. So there's a 100 kilowatt charger coming up. We're going to try it. Hopefully no one's using it. If someone is using it, then we're gonna try another um, charger a bit further on. But in the Mio app, which is difficult to see when you're driving, um, it tells you if the chargers are available or not available. So um, yeah, and if that's for all public chargers in Portugal, except for the Tesla chargers, obviously. The service station, see if this 100 kilowatt charger is available. In one kilometer, it's got an electric charger sign, so that's good. It's currently 10 Celsius outside. Um, it should, I thought it would be getting warmer now, to be honest, but perhaps it's gonna be a cold night in Lisbon as well. But we'll see, perhaps when we get closer to Lisbon, it will get warmer. It's the winter, it's the 2nd of December, 2023. Need to get some water because I've run out of water now. Uh, so this would be a good opportunity need to get a bit more water. But probably we'll only stop here for 10 minutes. So it's 10 minutes that we could have stopped in the supercharger. Now We're going to left, stop here. 20. Don't want to miss it. Do you see any chargers? Charger then. Where is it? Is it over there? Let's see where it is. It's hardly one here, is it? Where the hell is the charger? It did say charger, didn't it? 200 meters, stay straight to take the A23 IP6 slip it's found there. But you put it down here. How hard is it to find a charger? Is it in the petrol station? Found there again. The Chargers, it says road. here. Post of charging. So we go down around a different way. At least here you can go back if you make a mistake. Because you can't do that in some places. Is that a charger? It's all petrol. Oh, I see it's over there behind the petrol station. It's green. There's no one charging there. It seems to be like the chargers I used in France. Ah, that seems good then. This SEPSA charger and we'll see how you can use Portuguese charger. So hopefully it's currently 6.46 or quarter to, or more or less quarter to seven or quarter to eight in France. So the same thing as always, open a charge port, I get my Mio card, should be simple. That's like the ones in France, <laughs> new ones isn't. So we want this one here, CCS, it just says plug it in, plug it in, what does it say now? This charge, see how quick that was. I mean, with Mio, you can actually put it on auto charge so it can be like the superchargers, but I haven't done that. I prefer to use the cat. Let's have a look 48 kilowatts, 61 kilowatts, that's more like it, 74 kilowatts, 89 kilowatts. Do we get 100 kilowatts? 92? It's only 100 this one. Well, 92 is much quicker than what we were getting the supercharger, so we've had in 10 minutes, we'll have a much higher state of charge. So I'm going to go get a drink, uh, get some water, and then go to the toilet as well. So it seems good. So I guess this is the exit. Uh, ex in front. Yeah, so that's how we get home with 20%, that's good. We're gonna get home in one hour and 34 minutes. Now I definitely won't have to charge. Let's see if there's any issues on the way home, but hopefully it should just be easy from now on. It's been easy all day, hasn't it, really? There's been no charging problems. The only one issue was that there was no restaurant at a charging site for Tesla, but luckily I had some bread with me. But that's been the only problem all day, hasn't it, really? Just been going smoothly. And I'm not sure you could really do this trip quickly in, in a petrol car, to be honest. I'm not sure you could. But anyway, we're going to continue. So five kilometers from that charger, another road toll, 60 cents this time. Yes, that was a typical Portuguese service station. Um, the toilets were okay. Not as good as the toilets in the Tesla Supercharger in Guada. They're okay, it's typical service station toilets. And, and it had everything you needed really in the shop. It had a restaurant and stuff as well. So yeah, it's good. So 12 kilometers after the charge and another toll. 55 cents this time. It's getting cheaper.
we can easily do 120 kilometers an hour. So that's great. Might get a bit more traffic as we get closer to Lisbon. And then once we get close to Lisbon, we'll have to pass the bridge, the Vasco da Gama bridge that goes over the river Teju. And then uh, we'll be close to my home and we'll stop there and see how long it's taken us. Now another road toll, 30 kilometers from the charger and that one was 60 cents. And we're still on the A23, but soon we'll join another motorway, the A1, which will take us towards Lisbon. We're 39 kilometers since the last charger and now we've got another toll, 70 cents this time, 70 cents. Oh, do we hear the beep? Yeah, there's the beep. As we go from the A23 motorway to A1, we've got a different system for the um, tolls. Use the same um, toll electronic tag via Verd, but on these ones you can also use credit cards and money. Now the other one, when you come into Portugal, if you're a foreigner, in the border, just as you pass the border, at the first service station, you can associate your credit card to the number plate of your car. car. And with that, you can pass through all the tolls we've passed through now and it will take the money off your credit card by reading your number plate. So you don't need a little box like this one. But, but when you come into Portugal, it says foreigners, register your number plate here, something like that. Uh, you'll see it, but it'll be at the first place within a few kilometers on the, on the motorway. So now we won't get tolls every, I don't know, every 10 kilometers. We'll, we've registered this toll here and then when we leave, we will see how much it costs us when we leave this motorway. But that will be in like 100 kilometers or something. It's exactly 7.30 in Portugal now. That means it's exactly 8.30 in France. That, that means it's taken us 12 hours to get here. So where are we? So we are 1,076 kilometers away from where we started in Bordeaux this morning. And we've used 187 kilowatt hours. And in this time, the average has been 174 watt hours per kilometer. That's absolutely amazing when you can see the weather conditions we've had this morning. Very cold, we've basically had cold weather the whole day. The heat pump in this car seems to be working perfectly. Um, it is getting warmer now as we get close to Lisbon. It's 13 degrees Celsius. Uh, this last section of the trip, it's actually getting warmer, but it's still winter. It's unbelievable. I wouldn't get these kind of figures doing this trip in the summer in my Volkswagen ID3. So the, this car is just so efficient. And the efficiency would be even better in the summer. It's unbelievable. Anyway, we've got more or less an hour to get home. Um, Let's see if we can do it within 13 hours. It depends a bit of the traffic and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's unbelievable. Didn't it say this morning it was going to take us 13 hours and five minutes, I think. So let's see. That was the Tesla navigation saying that. Let's see how accurate it actually was when we arrive home. And I said it should be under 13 hours. Well, might be. We'll see. Um, what did you say when I asked you how many hours you thought it would take us at the beginning of this video? Are you correct or are you not correct? Well, we'll see when we get home. This is going to slow us down. So it's saying we're going to arrive home at exactly 8.30, which would mean exactly 13 hours. The problem is, I've just seen a sign that's saying in 10 kilometers, there's been an accident and there's slow traffic because of the accident. So I guess um, that's going to slow us down. So it's probably going to be more than 13 hours, but without the accident, and seeing how accurate this Tesla is, I think we'd have done it in 13 hours and one minute. But anyway, we'll see how long it takes us to get through the traffic. Hopefully it won't take too long. Hopefully the accident is not too serious for anybody involved in it. This can happen on any trip, I guess, even for petrol car drivers, uh, they get held up in traffic. But there seems to be the problem here. but there doesn't seem to be much of a traffic jam, fortunately. So there's no traffic jam, so that didn't slow us down much. So now it's been 125 kilometers since the last charger. It's eight o'clock exactly. So this means we've been in the car 12 hours and 30 minutes. We're going through the toll. So let's see how much this section of the motorway has cost us. 
I think this is the last toll before my house. Hopefully it's the last toll. It's four euros and five cents. No, six euros sixty, sorry. I mean, six euros sixty. Yeah, that's good. So we're just gonna pull off the A1 now and go on to the Vasco da Gama bridge. And we're basically in Lisbon and it's 8.07. We're not going to Lisbon, we're going to Moita, which is just south of the river. And currently we've done 1,148 kilometers. Now take exit one on. So we're joining the other motorway, we're going south now. So apparently we've got 28 kilometers to go, probably 27. So I don't think it will quite be 1,000, 200 kilometers but nearly but it's been an epic trip that's for sure we're going over the second biggest the second longest bridge in europe the longest bridge in europe is the kersha bridge between crimea and russia so let's go on this bridge hopefully this will be the longest bridge again soon but here we go we're going on to it this part here is 90 kilometers an hour now we're going on to the suspension part of the bridge. We've got onto the section of the bridge where we can do 120 kilometers an hour. So that's what we're going to do. And it's 13 degrees Celsius outside. Um, so it's not that warm, but it's much warmer than Bordeaux this morning, which wasn't that two or three degrees Celsius. We've, we've just come off the bridge and now we're going to get on another motorway, which will take us to my hometown, where we're going to stop at the supermarket which has got good lighting so we can see when we're going to get there. Now, now it's 8.17 and we've got 12 kilometers to go. Will it be under 13 hours or over 13 hours? We will see for this trip. Two kilometers, we'll be home at Moita. So what time is it? It's currently 8.22. Will we get there between, before 8.30? Let's see. I'm just gonna turn off now. As you can see there, it's 8.22. Uh, it's nice saying we're going to get there at 8.25. Ho -ho! Coming off the motorway. Supermarket's just over there. What's it saying? It's currently 8.23. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. About, we get past this roundabout and then we'll be in the supermarket more or less. So it's 8.23, 8.23. Let's just go up here. Go around here, get the lights of the supermarket and park. It's an Audi, Audi for the win. Um, and let's see, shall we? What is it? It's 8.24, 8.24. that, 8.24, so 8.24. And then let's start to look at some stats, shall we? So it recommends charging now because it's saying there'll be significantly less energy available from your battery if it gets colder. We recommend charging now. So it's 11 Celsius. Um, I'm going to charge as soon as I get home. Um, so let's look at the stats, shall we then? Let's look at the stats. So we've done 1,176 kilometers. I thought it was going to be a little bit more, but it's not, that's fine. We've used 202 kilowatt hours and our average has been 172 watt hours per kilometre. Again, this car is unbelievable and bringing any and bringing a Tesla Model 3, even the real wheel drive version, this wasn't the long range version, from Bordeaux to Lisbon in, how long did it take us? It's 8.24 when we arrived, that means it took us 12 hours and 54 minutes to do all those kilometres. And the Tesla said we'd do it, I believe, in 13 hours and five minutes. So I wasn't breaking the speed limit. And basically we did it a bit quicker than Tesla expected. I think one of the reasons why we did it a bit quicker is because we used the SEPS uh, service station. And in some parts, the car was a bit more efficient than what uh, Tesla was expecting it to be. But, um, but, but even so, a Tesla, a Tesla was out by 11 minutes. For such a long trip, the Tesla navigation was out by 11 minutes. We just followed what the navigation did, except at the last stop at the SEPSA service station. So the car is absolutely amazing, unbelievable. Now, if you're going to do this in the summer, you'll get better efficiency, but you might get more traffic in the summer as well. So it's, um, it's like that. Another, the first charger and the second charger, I felt I stopped, I could have stopped a little bit longer. The charger where we stopped, where was there was no restaurant or coffee shop. Um, 
I thought that those 30 minutes really I'd only need to stop for 10 minutes to have a quick rest and uh, eat a bit of bread and crisps that was a little bit too long at the Guarda services I felt it was a little bit too um, quick as well because I had to rush down the toasted sandwich near the end to get back to the car in time and um, at the last one I think was at a six minute stop seven minute stop that was perfect so all in all it's been perfect if you're going to do this with a family even in a petrol car I think it's going to take you longer because you're going to stop more often you're probably going to get a proper lunch somewhere or something so Bordeaux to Lisbon 1176 kilometers 11 euros 22 at the Bayern supercharger just a 19 minute stop bit longer in River Beloza that was on the River Ebro, 19 euros 33 cents. It told the sealers 18 euros 77. Now in Portugal in Guarda Supercharger, 18 euros 16. And at the Sepsa, seven minute quick top up, 8 euros and 31 cents. Total cost of Model 3, 75 euros and 79 cents. Now I didn't include the initial 80%. Why didn't I include that? Because I got free charging in the car park in Bordeaux and you could have done the same. So first 80 something percent was free, but we did arrive with 20%, but I didn't take that off the cost here. Now in a petrol car, the average is on the motorway six liters per hundred kilometers, so quite an efficient petrol car to do the same trip. With the price of petrol in Portugal at that time, and I don't know what the price in France was or Spain, but anyway, we keep the Portuguese price for December of petrol 95 simple, so that's the cheapest petrol current you can get. At the time it was one euro and 69 cents. Now it's a little bit more expensive. The total cost in a petrol car would have been 119 euros and 88 cents, more or less. So that gives us an EV saving of 44 euros and nine cents, and that's pretty good, I would say. So that's everything I can tell you about this car. It's been an epic journey. Please click subscribe, please click like, uh, share this with people, just show them how good the Model 3 is. Remember, remember to use my Tesla referral code below if you want to buy a Tesla, absolutely amazing. The car's perfect. And thank you again for watching and bye.